Real quick before the video gets started, we've got shirts designed by yours truly available in large, extra large, and 2XL. If you're interested in picking up one to support the channel, check the link in the description below. On to the video. So this is the blue TRX that I'd originally planned on buying when I sold the Hellcat Durango. The whole point of selling the Hellcat Durango was to buy this truck. The day before the Durango sold, someone bought the truck and that sucks. But I'm actually relieved because this one has bead locks on it and I don't want bead locks. I don't like the way they look. I think they look better just all black. So I'm actually glad Plus, in my opinion, the car that I ended up with is better. But I wanted this T-Rex. This T-Rex was awesome, other than the bead locks. This is fully loaded. Way more features than the one that I had before. But everything worked out for the best. My new deal was done. Taking delivery of that car here fairly soon. So yeah. So long, T-Rex. So it's been a weird, tumultuous week for me personally uh, when it comes to what I drive. Um, about three weeks ago, I came across a, a fully loaded Ram TRX at my local Dodge dealership. And uh, I've missed my TRX since I sold my TRX. Now, the TRX that I had before didn't have very many options. It was... Uh, just above a base model and uh i got i got the opportunity to buy the durango hellcat and i wanted the durango hellcat so i sold the trx and i bought the durango hellcat um my intent when i bought the hellcat durango was to keep it for six months or a year uh let all the allocations sell uh the, for the 2000 units and then sell it at a profit um when it reached its peak value that was always the intent. I, I wanted to drive it. I, I'm not going to buy a car that I don't like, regardless if I'm going to make money on it. So I, I definitely wanted the car, and I love the Durang I love the Durango. I still love the Durango. Um, but it came to a point where I had to decide if I wanted to continue to put money into the car, like add a tow package because it doesn't have the tow package. If I wanted to um, to change some of the cosmetics, you know, did I want to did I want to do things to the car? Or did I just want to keep it as it was until I sold it? So I knew that it was about time to move on. Now, I wasn't planning on selling it again for about six months or so, at least. And then I came across a fully loaded uh, Ram TRX at $93,000 with no markups. Every option available. And I didn't get that chance the first time. So I figured I'd jump on it. Now, in order to buy that, uh, I would have to sell the Durango. No bank is going to finance me for... Uh, a Hellcat Durango, a Hellcat Challenger, and a Ram TRX at the same time. You know, I don't have it like that. So I knew I would have to sell the Durango first. So I went ahead and put it on Car Gurus, which was, is, I love Car Gurus. This is not a sponsored video, but I'm on Car Gurus all the time. I went on there. I, they had 13 Hellcat Durangos nationwide on the site. Um, the average listing price was between 115,000 and 125,000. And I buy, sell, and trade for a living, so I know that the easiest way to sell something is to undercut the cheapest item you can find. So I listed it at 108,000. I let it sit for about a week. I, I monitored the situation with the TRX. My local Dodge dealer had one on order, but the, it hadn't it hadn't arrived yet. So a week passed. And I, I kept checking back to make sure that they still had it available and no hits on my Durango. So I, I, I widened my net a little bit. I, I put it on Craigslist, Facebook Marketplace, still no hits. Now I understand that a car of that value is going to take a while. And at $108,000, so to some that, that figure may seem strange, but you got to remember this Durango, there's only 2,000 and the, there are a few more being built for canceled orders, but they're not going to, it's still a limited production vehicle. It's going to go up in value. And like I said, they're being sold at markups all across the country. And the cheapest one on Cargo was at the time was 115 and they went as high as 135. So I knew I was going to be able to make some money on it. But 108 seemed like a fair price at the time. 
um, it was the cheapest one on uh, car gurus and it let, I let it sit there for a week after a week I started to doubt that I would ever see the 108 unless I really did wait till all of the allocations had sold um, so I lowered the price to 105 and I let it sit there for another day um, now being a fan of the CarMax videos where people take their cars to CarMax and see what they can get for it uh, usually it's exotic cars or something more high-end um, I had already done a CarMax Durango video so I took the I took the Durango there for a second time and the reason I did that was because when I took my TRX the first time they offered one amount the second time they offered fourteen thousand dollars more than they did the first time so I knew that the, pro the there was a probability that the price would go up but the second, um, the second offer was the same as the first. It was about a month in between the two times that I took it to CarMax, maybe a month and a half. And their second offer was the same as the first. So I knew that CarMax wasn't gonna be an option. $88,000 is I'm not gonna sell the car for a $5,000 profit. I know that it's worth a lot more than that. So I lowered the price to 100,000 on uh, CarGurus, Craigslist and Facebook Marketplace. Now I started to get some, um, some some interest, but uh, mostly low ball offers. It was nonsense. So at 100,000, I still wasn't getting much interest other than low ball offers. And I messaged a friend of mine that, um, that works in the financial offices at a Chrysler dealership here locally. And he told me that next month, um, they're gonna be getting a bunch of cars. The dealerships in the network that he works for, because he works at Chrysler, he has contacts in the network of dealerships across the country uh, that, that also deal with Dodge vehicles. And he saw that there were eight allocated Dodge Durango Hellcats nationwide that are going to be shipped in June just in that particular network of dealerships that doesn't include other dealers so I knew that if I didn't get off of this thing soon more were going to be available and that just pushes the price down it's simple supply and demand so he told me to put it on Auto Trader. he said that he has more luck with Auto Trader than he does any other site and so I knew then that I needed to lower the price a little bit more and then I put it on Auto Trader. Within an hour, I got an offer on Auto Trader for $95,000. Now, $95,000 doesn't give me exactly what I wanted, but it would give me what I needed. If I wanted to get out of the Hellcat Durango and still make a profit, then that's what I would need to do. So that's what I did. I accepted a $95,000 offer. Now, that offer actually named or never came to fruition. Two days passed and I didn't hear anything else. So just as I was getting ready to lower the price again, a second offer of 95,000 came in. That offer I accepted. Now here's where it gets interesting. I made an appointment with the person interested. They, they own a, an exotic car dealership in Florida. They were gonna fly in, see the vehicle, and pay me in cash for my end, and then pay the bank off with a cashier's check. I made $12,500 on the deal. She gave me cash and then I called the car dealership. I got my $12,500 in cash. Um, I also got $3,500 back from the Durango, uh, the extended warranty and the gap insurance I purchased. So all in all, I made $16,000 on the deal. I called the, Do the Dodge dealership to let them know I still wanted the TRX. And as luck would have it, it sold the day before. So now, I've already been paid for my, I've already been paid for the Durango. Um, I can't not, I can't back out now, um, but I have no, I have, the TRX is gone. They're gonna get another one at the end of June, but it's just like the one I had and I don't wanna get one that's just like the one I had. There's a reason I sold it to begin with. So now I'm trying to kind of stuck in a rock and a hard place. I made a video about why this is a bad time to buy a used car or any car for that matter. Unless you're gonna get something that's a specialty car, it's gonna be the same price anytime uh, within the same ballpark. Right now is a bad, bad time to buy a car. Not only is it overpriced, not only are you gonna pay more, but availability on what you would actually want is extremely, extremely limited. So my TRX is gone and and that's the, I chased it for three weeks. It was available for three weeks and the day before I get my money for the Durango and clear the Durango from my debt to income. <laughs> the TRX sells. So that's out of the question now. Thursday morning, I load my son up in the car and uh, we drive over to Do Crown Dodge. It's pouring rain and I don't know what I'm gonna do. I'm driving my Dodge Journey that I featured on the channel recently. And um, I decided that I didn't wanna drive the Journey. Any I, I, I had enough. I drove it for three or four days and I just didn't wanna drive it anymore. So I was gonna sell that in addition to selling the Durango 
and put that money towards whatever I was going to purchase, but I didn't know what I was going to purchase. And, um, it was just kind of disheartening. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm very fortunate and thankful. I work hard and God has blessed me with a, with a great life. I felt disheartened because of the car I wanted to, because I just sold a car that I love to get something that I wanted a little bit more and it was gone and I didn't want to wait. I'm impatient. That's the whole problem with the, with me to begin with is that I'm impatient. And I pull up into the Dodge dealership and I see something sitting out front that I wasn't expecting. And we'll talk about that in the next video. So stay tuned.